Hi, I'm Dr. Carol Darsa, author, trauma psychologist, and founder of Reconnect Integrative Trauma Treatment Center in Los Angeles. Welcome to my series of Real People, Real Issues. We are interviewing people who are uh, volunteering to talk about their real problems and asking questions. And my goal is for you guys to really listen to them and identify and hopefully learn something from them. My next guest is Alex Ann. We're going to be talking about her loss of motherhood and how she's still struggling with the trauma that she's been carrying for over 30 years. Let's listen to us. Thank you, Alexan, for being a volunteer. Thank you for, you know, I'm looking forward to, I've been watching your work and of course read the book. And so I've been looking forward to actually talking with you and uh, sharing a little bit about my life with you and, you know, helping getting some help and then maybe helping other people as well. So Great. thank you. Great. Okay. So just tell me a little bit about what is the topic you wanted to bring up? Yeah, the topic was, um, I just had a realization the other day that was so impactful. And I had, uh, back in the 1970s, uh, a hysterectomy at age 25. And um, all I ever wanted from the time that I was a child was to be a mom and raise a bunch of kids and take care of a family and just that whole experience. And so at 25, I had what a second ectopic pregnancy and doctors could do whatever they wanted. People don't know that women don't realize this, but they could do whatever they wanted back in the 1970s. So when I came out of my second ectopic surgery, they said to me, while we were there, we figured you didn't need your uterus. So we took it out too. And I was devastated. I was just devastated at that moment in time. It was like the everything in my life just stopped. And the result that it had in me was, um, one, I couldn't, for like 10 years, I couldn't be around pregnant women. I couldn't go to baby showers. I didn't want have anything to do with people's kids. And, um, and the, the biggest piece I think that's affected me is that I, the choice to be able to be a, work, a mom or working in the work, work world, that was taken away from me. And I remember the words coming out of my mouth like, uh, oh, yeah, I didn't get to be a mom. Now I get to go to work. And so what's happened, Carol, is fast forward, you know, 40 years, I have sabotaged my work life out of resentment. I think that's what it is. I'm trying, I still am hoping you can piece a little more of it together, but out of the resentment of having to go to work, every time I'm about to accomplish something big, I self-sabotage. I go into shutdown mode or just like an inner lethargy that I can't put my fingers on and can't seem to move past. You so I feel related to, yeah, that that resentment, I know that whole thing is still in there. And that was a huge, huge, huge trauma. You know, it took me 10 years to finally start doing work on it. And I know we've had the conversation where I told you I've done a lot of work on my life. And there are other things that are like huge for some people that I have nothing connected to it. But this just came up the other day and I was in tears and I, I took a whole day. I lost, you know, I didn't work the whole day. I just went to sleep and was like, whoa. So surprised you. It totally surprised me. Why? Yes. Um, you know, I, I think that I thought that I had cleared it up and I can even feel it underneath right now. I think like one of the biggest moments is um, someone had done this genealogy book for our family. And my family's huge. I have 65 first cousins and they've all got kids and kids and kids. And as it was flipping through the pages of this genealogy book, everything stopped at me. Like everybody had, you know, families and everybody's getting together and my sister's with her grandkids right now. And I, I mean, I got nothing. So it, it's kind of like, I'm going to just feel this tears. I'm just going to be really open about it. And yeah. it's like, you know, everybody's got all this stuff and I've just got nothing. And I still, so obviously it's still really there. So I'm, I don't know, like 
you know, when you offered this opportunity, it was like, I will go anywhere I can for help. I'm not under the belief that one path cures everything, but that so many people have so many insights. And, um, you know, I got a lot out of reading the book. And so and I don't know if that like awakened some of it. I don't know. <laughs> Let's just yeah. take a bit of a pause. Just okay. tell me what you notice right now in your body. Um, I'm totally hot. Like my stomach is really on fire mm. and uh, my ble- my uh, heart's racing. Mm-hmm. Um, my throat feels constricted. My I'm shaking. So like my whole arms are hot. This whole upper part of my body is hot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just stay with that right now. Don't try to okay. change it. Don't try to cool yourself. Don't try to get away from it. But just without any judgment. Just really notice that heat and just bring your attention to here and to nowhere else. Yeah, it's right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So just get in it. Notice the quality of it. Notice what happens when you just stay with that and just track it. Yeah, it feels really scary. Mm. Something is coming. Yeah, up. so fear coming is coming up. Mm-hmm. And where do you feel the fear in your body? How do you know that it was fear? Um, oh, you know, that's a good question. I don't know. My throat got really, really constricted. Uh-huh. Yeah, you were just touching there. Yeah. I don't know how I know it's fear. It just oh. feels like fear. Uh-huh. Okay, so that, notice the constriction. Also, along with the heat, what's happening as you notice the constriction? Does the heat change in any direction? Yeah, it's um, it's more. Uh, it's not changed in a direction, but it's a little cooler as I'm focusing on the constriction. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. My armpits are sweating like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so just allow the body to show its feelings. Sometimes we think we just have to think here or feel, but let the body just really sit with this, process it. It's almost like maybe uh, your body didn't have a chance to express herself. Just sort of coming up with, with this tension and the heat now and really allow it. Just really give permission. And just kind of notice what happens as you sit with that way. Yeah. My heart just did a quick little flip flop. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel like this is a weird feeling. Like the top half is very separate from the bottom half. Oh, uh-huh. Okay. The bottom half is fine. The top half is freaking out. <laughs> oh, okay. So notice that. But again, no judgment. Okay. The top half is freaking out. And as you just stay there, let that part know that it's okay. And if you can keep actually your eyes open, you don't have to look at the camera because that could be distracted. You can look elsewhere if you want, but just so that you really stay present here. Freaking out and just kind of see if if the body wants to say anything or do anything, do you notice anything without changing yet, but just sort of notice it? It's odd. It just kind of feels like a little bit of more calmness. Mm-hmm. What's happening with the tension in the throat? Oh, yeah, that's not as, as much as it was. Mm-hmm. I think what you said, that whole thing about permission. Mm. Yeah. Because, you know, as soon as the memory comes up, I try to stuff it as fast as possible. (laughs) Yeah. That's a common defense, right? Or dissociate. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how you know how to protect yourself from feeling worse. especially if you were 25, 
Yeah. You're probably even different than how you are today. Very much so. Right. Yeah, so as you stay with the sensations in the body, just notice it. And as you track, continue to track even all the way down to your feet. And see if, if at point, is there any flow between the two parts? Yeah, I can feel my feet now a lot. Mm -hmm. Where it was feeling separate before. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling my feet a lot more, my hands a lot more now. And, um, and what's the sensation that you notice in your feet and in your hand? Um, a little bit of tingling. Mm -hmm. uh, my feet feel heavier, actually. Kind of more groundedy, mm -hmm. sort of. Mm -hmm. Like I'm aware of my whole body. Uh -huh. Where before it was just the top half up. Right. And what's happening to the fear as you feel your whole body? Yeah, um, yeah I'm not feeling fear. Mm -hmm. More just feeling in touch inside. Mm -hmm. More like more like a meditative state almost. Mm -hmm. So almost like settling down is what I'm noticing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Just, yeah. So expand on that settling down throughout the whole body. But don't, don't push it. Just really organically allow the body to do what it wants to do. And again, reminding yourself, there's, you are, you have a permission, the body has a permission to feel, to express yourself. <laughs> Kane, I'm like, okay, I just want to pee. <laughs> you probably have to edit that out. <laughs> it's like, whoa, okay, that was a surprise. Something simple, right? When you yeah. Check. Yeah. Yeah, like, let's just get rid of this. Uh -huh. It doesn't even feel like get rid of it. Because that just feels like trying to stuff it again. Huh. But that was your first reaction. That's, yeah. It, it, that was the first word that came. Mm -hmm. And you, when you said it, what were you referring to? The pain. Mm -hmm. The pain of the memory. The pain of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So you just made a little, make a contact with that pain again. And see where that shows up in your body. Yeah, it's in now it's in my female or whatever's left of where that space, the uh -huh. womb space. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, and that it's so, so this is weird. It feels like the we, womb space, but at the same time, the mind just hopped in with, boy, you got cheated. Uh huh. Yeah. You got cheated, yeah. Yeah. So when you say that, what happens? Um, I think that awakens the resentment. It moves it right back up. It's back up like in my, my chin was like starting to quiver. and. Okay, we're going slow, but don't move that much. Just really stay connected to any sensation that comes. You can see that your body is processing a lot because this is also physical trauma. Yeah. You talked oh, about it, the but there's a physical trauma here. Yeah, it's true. And and so uh -huh. now I'm cold. Uh -huh. Now I'm really cold. Uh -huh. Like my hands are very cold. My knees are cold, and yeah, yeah. It's like I'm almost like one step short of actually shivering. Mm -hmm. And is there an emotion that goes with that? Just sadness. That one is sadness. Yeah. You are sad because? Mm, good question. Because I didn't have a choice. Yeah. And so young for such a trauma. 
that s- stepping back and looking at a life from just an observer point of view, so young to have gone through such a trauma and no, oh, I know what it is. No help. I had no help, oh. no support. There was no one. Uh-huh. And even to the point of like, I was taking too long to heal and it was an inconvenience uh-huh. for the man that I was with. Uh-huh. So not only you didn't have support, but you were judged and... Yeah, it was an inconvenience. And yep. would I hurry up and then move out because there was no more need for me. Mm-hmm. All right. Stay with the body now. Tell me what, what happens. Such sadness. Yeah. It's a really deep sadness. Hmm. Do you see yourself as that 20... The 25 yeah. year Can you see that 25 yeah. year Yeah. Yeah. I can't even see what I'm wearing. Mm. What are you wearing? Uh, kind of a rust colored A-line skirt. And because uh, they were down at calf length back then. Uh-huh. And platform shoes and some yeah. kind of a button up shirt top mm-hmm. tucked in. What yeah. happens to your body if you make contact with that part of you? with that 25 year old, you can't even make an eye contact with her. Mm. I can't see her face. Mm. I have no idea what her hair was like. I can only see her body. Mm -hmm. What happened? Yeah, that's so interesting that choices that came from that were all so such devastating choices no uh, i don't know how to say this and i don't know if you're gonna what you're gonna do with this but they were choices of danger situations i put myself in situation after situation after situation of danger it's like a punishment, punishment choices. Mm-hmm. You're so, punishing your body? Yeah, punishing my soul. Your soul. Yeah. You were angry. Punishing her for, yeah. Yeah, I was... Say the yeah. of it, punishing her? For... Uh, for her body not performing like it's supposed to have Mm -hmm. doing something that caused who are you really angry with gosh it's intense huh you know I don't I want to say my first husband Mm -hmm. what happens right now in your body let's pause again and just Boy, this is more than you bargained for, huh? <laughs> what a surprise. Uh, my throat's constricted again, mm-hmm. but I am very cold. Mm-hmm. Okay, the coldness there. And yeah. tell me more where it is cold in your body. Um, uh, my shoulders, my back is very cold. My legs are cold. The tops of my hands are cold. Mm-hmm. My palms are hot. My mm-hmm. palms are really hot. Mm-hmm. I have them on my lap. It's the only thing keeping my legs warm. Yeah. See, when you think of your husband, ex-husband, notice if your body wants to do any move. But don't move. Just notice. Mm -mm. Okay. It seems like it's a separate person. Like that younger me is a separate person, separate mm-hmm. from me now. Mm-hmm. Can you see her face now? Not yet. I can see her from before him. Hmm. And then in my early 40s, but then everything else I can't see her face. I'm trying to think. I have no idea what my hair was. Nothing. It's okay. 
if you could tell her something right now, as you just maybe came out of the surgery, what would you be saying? I'm going back to that original topic. Ah, this is not your fault. This is not your fault. And, and, uh, don't, I would say, don't keep it inside. Go find someone to help you. Go find some help. Mm -hmm. find, a, find a woman. Find someone who will help you through this. See if she can actually hear you. Really feel her and see if she's able to really hear that. Or how does she react to that statement? Yeah, she starts crying. Mm -hmm. So lost. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> uh, I think that's what I would say. You know. Yeah. You don't but have to do this alone. Can you connect to her as a part of your body? Like if you touch a certain part of your body, where would that be? There? It is. It's here, yeah. yeah. It's like a whole there. long, long piece inside, right inside here. Okay. Yeah. Keep your hand there. If you want to put your other hand even a bit lower, mm -hmm. okay. just really stay connected. Just really settling into the body. Oh, yeah, right on the um, womb part. That's where my other hand is. Uh -huh. Just say again what you just said. It's not your fault. Yeah, it's not your fault. You didn't do this. This wasn't planned. You didn't do this on purpose. Oh, I know. I ha had, um, oh man, I was angry at God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, how could he do this to me? Yeah. Yeah. And then I was also angry at myself for two things. This husband, I got pregnant. The first pregnancy was with him. And when I realized um, it was a very traumatic marriage and... <clears throat> when I realized I was going to have a child with him, I said this prayer that I was so connected, so connected. And I just said, God, whatever you do, do not let me have a child by this man, whatever it takes. And that was when I had the first ectopic pregnancy. And I don't think I had the correct medical care after that, which caused the other fallopian tube to still be blocked. Mm -hmm. And so when, when I got pregnant the second time, um, you know, that was the second ectopic pregnancy. And they just didn't have the technology to <clears throat> do anything other than take things out back then. Mm -hmm. So I was, when you asked me who was I angry at, yeah, I was really angry at God. And you was, said at yourself. At myself, yeah. For? For not taking better care of myself, for not finding out what I needed to know about myself or myself as a woman or my body as a woman. Just trust mm -hmm. arbitrary doctors or, you know, believing that what was going on was my fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It wasn't my fault. No, it wasn't. No. What happens in your body when you say it wasn't my fault now as you? A little bit lighter, a little bit lightness. And it's, I'm looking for inside my brain, I'm looking for like uh, what else there is to have learned from it in addition to oh. it not being my fault. I'm, I'm going to suggest don't, don't do that right now. Okay. I think you're very used to doing that already. Instead, just really allow the feeling to come forward. There's grieving, there's sadness, there's a lot of judgments that showed up. There's confusion about relationship. Where did wow. these feelings go, right? Yeah, I mean, I've stuffed them for so long. Mm -hmm. I wonder where in your body they're stuffed. In the bottom half. <laughs> in the bottom half? Yeah, they're stuffed in the bottom half. <sighs> So if you can get in touch with that sensation. And just 
Notice the body. Again, there was a physical trauma surgery. Oh, yeah, now I have a headache right here. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay. Get out. Oh. There we go. Oh. What was that? Okay. That was like, uh, all of a sudden there was like this huge uh, feeling in my womb area. And then it was just like, okay, don't sit still anymore because this has to get out some way. It's like, get out. If I sat, my body just doesn't want to sit still. Uh It just doesn't want to sit still. It's like, okay. Well, as you were getting deeper into the emotion, that's when you were like, get out. I gotta, I gotta get rid of it. Yeah. It's hard. It is hard. It has no space. I think it's important, just based on this now, it's important to respect the timing of it and rather than wishing like, okay, how do I move on? And because it's so long ago. So me, so right? me. Okay. <laughs> Doing, slowing it down and, and just each time incrementally allowing yourself to feel a bit more of the grief rather than maybe you are wishing, okay, in one hour, Carol is going to help me to get yeah. with it, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm also very conscious like, oh, I don't want to take too much of her time. No. I put aside an hour uh, in case we need it. And I could go deeper, but I'm getting a sense that it has to be slower and it has to be increments. Maybe it's almost like today, that's all you can feel. And then tomorrow when you get in touch, you know, uh, you feel a little bit more rather than saying to yourself, well, but it's 40 years ago, I should have been done or I talked about it or or I moved on because look, I have a very functional life. you know, those would be still a way to just sort of get rid of it because Mm -hmm. there are people who do get rid of kind of moves, but you can't get rid of it that way because there's still a lack of true acceptance and empathy in in that statement. Yeah. Really empathy of understanding the depth of the pain. You can just tell just by the way I look that, you know, I'm not like light and relieved of it. It's there. I'm consciously in it. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the feeling piece is very difficult for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm incredibly visual and uh, feelings. I'll, I can describe a feeling, but to feel a feeling is something mm-hmm. different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, I could see that you're looking something to do with it rather than be with it. Because you were asking, okay, what did I learn? What else did I learn so I can move on? There's still that urge to move on rather than sit. So as we did this, I could see it more, uh, how, how that unfolds, rather than every day I'm going to sit a little bit. So when it showed up last week, it surprised you. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could sometimes even anger a person. That's not like, how, why is that still here? It shouldn't be, you know? So I really urge you to change your a point of view about that and see it as I'm going to just make it okay and I'm not going to open all at once because right. yesterday we could do even more stuff and, and open it more and more and then you can hyperventilate and cry and yes you could have some sort of even maybe benefit or a relief but I prefer that you don't do it that way and then you just allow a little bit today but to know that you will allow yourself more and that you're not going to tomorrow look for what do I do with it? Mm -hmm. More like, how do I sit with it? Mm -hmm. Because you've already done something with it. You, 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 you started working at young age and you're okay. What are the action steps? Right. Right. So interesting right now, because my stomach is so relaxed. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) <laughs> and that is an odd feeling. I hold my stomach in all the time. Mm-hmm. I 
someone told me in fourth grade, if you wanted to be beautiful, you need to suck your stomach in. Mm -hmm. So I have been sucking my stomach in since fourth grade. So belly breathing or something like that is like, what are you people talking about? Mm -hmm. Breathing is here. But right now my stomach is like all fully expanded and open and um, like when I take a breath, my belly actually expands. Uh-huh. But okay. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Not from me forcing it. It's just right. now That's there. Great. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. So you can see it's like the body, your body didn't even have a permission again to just be, to expand. Right. And so you're in sort of this construct, constricted mode. Otherwise, yeah. like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, my shoulders are down. Mm-hmm. Um, my I'm connected top to bottom. I can feel my feet on the floor. Um, my stomach, my belly's expanded, and I just kind of feel like inside myself. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yes. How is the okay. connection between the top and the bottom part now of your body? Yeah, very connected. What tells you that? <sighs> And it's a visual, it's an image. Before, when we started, um, oh, I was also sitting cross-legged with my feet up on a, a ledge underneath my desk. And, um, it, and my feet were angled in a different direction than my body facing. So now, if you could see, everything is facing in exactly the same direction. And um, on the ground? my feet are on the ground both firmly planted my hand my palms are on my thighs um and uh my elbows are resting on my arm i'm like uh, uh congruent mm. everything is on the same plane or the same match it matches so mm-hmm. and it feels really comfortable okay yeah, I'm not trying to force my shoulders back and sit up straight, and it just feels very comfortable. And so I don't... Restlessness you were feeling just a little while ago, it's gone? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I feel really connected, very grounded, and um, just in my body, which is a rare experience. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So my recommendation to you would be from here on when you go back to therapy or whoever you are talking with, come back to visit it again, this mm-hmm. topic. Don't mm-hmm. make it be gone. Really allow, there's a lot of, I didn't get into anything because I'm just trying to make it sort sure. of generally inform, informative for you. Um, because again, it was a physical body trauma, right? Along with emotional stuff. Really allow the body to feel get more into the grieving and you might even want to do actually sort of really memory by memory meaning before the surgery how you felt right after the surgery all like the the the, the trauma all the surgery itself how you woke up what happened like really just allowing to process these detailed uh memories with you Mm -hmm. and gradually going into because you look into the meaning of it but the body was holding on probably to a lot of this uh thing losing an organ is a traumatic yeah experience or you not said only the meaning of it you see what i mean that i think what you said about the physical i would never considered it being a physical trauma as well as an emotional trauma mm-hmm. so yeah and there have been several ensuing surgeries in that area as a result mm-hmm. so i have what we laughingly call a ziploc bag scar Oh, you're going in again, just unzip the same scar and you go zip it back up. So um, this is really, when I'm you surprised. Say we are calling it, who's we? The doctors. We but call you it hear, do you hear that tone, the way you say that to me? No, I can't hear it. There's a minimization in mm. that. Yeah, uh, making it light as if it doesn't mean something, huh? Yeah, it takes the value of it away it takes actually along with it the pain but it definitely has a minimizing quality to it which is not fair to you and to your brain right. so i think you and i should have some more conversations about uh working together and what might come out of that too 
I, the somatic work is not something that I, um, that happens. It's all pretty much mental work that I do. Mm. So this was a very surprising. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So is this a good time to close just for today? Yes. So do, again, there's a lot to explore. There. I can see a lot of different branch one can take. Yeah. For the sake of today. And because yeah. I don't want your system, even though, yes, you can tolerate it, mm -hmm. but I prefer that your system says, okay, I felt a little bit and that's where I stop. And then the next day I feel a little bit more. Right. Yeah. Are that sounds good. Yeah. And I feel good inside my body right now. So, okay. If you can just tell me as a closing, like, what are you getting out of this? Wow. Um, like, what are you leaving with? The depth of how much, uh, a trauma, either physical or emotional, is stored in the body. Mm -hmm. And how much of my life, which means, you know, I'm pretty normal, that means 50% of most of the world thinks that, uh, uh, that you can just uh, ignore it and it'll go away. Yeah. And how long the effect of a trauma can last in a person's life. Mm -hmm. okay that yeah that makes sense good yeah just stay gentle go smaller increment smaller parts of of the memory and uh, of the whole experience okay thank you so much you're welcome wow amazing experience you're welcome thank you for listening again and thank you definitely to Alexanne for volunteering to share her heart with us uh, if you're interested in different topics, please write a comment or email me at drdarsa at reconnectcenter.com. You could be my next guest or you can make requests of what kind of topics you want me to cover. My goal is to help you all. Remember, trauma equals disconnect, healing equals reconnect. Please stay connected.